Yes, because if he really wants out of the Jets, this really does a goes a long way toward making that happen. He is devaluing himself as a tradable asset for the Jets because he's making it known publicly that he's not happy. So first of all, he's, a, he's a, under at least one more year of team control on his rookie deal. For a premier player um, in the secondary, that's valuable for another team to have, except that he's going to want a new deal right away. So suddenly you're not getting him on that deal. So what are you going to give the Jets for him? Well, not as much as if he had three years left on it. You know, he's just a year in. So already he's not the kind of tradable asset the Jets, like the Jets aren't going to be able to get back likely what they'd like to get back for a player of his caliber. But the longer they wait, if this continues to be an issue, if he's out there publicly saying stuff like this, then his, his value decreases even further because people know he's unhappy, he doesn't want to play there, and you can't have a situation like that on a team that's not very good to begin with, that doesn't have a winning culture to begin with. So if his point is to get off the Jets, then this was a smart thing to do. I disagree. I disagree that it was smart because I think, I, and I'm not talking about the, the video and strictly confining it to that. I know that he gave a list of seven teams, but the problem is he's been emphasizing one above the others, which is the Dallas Cowboys. You know, you dilute your marketability and whatever leverage that you may have when you do something like that. Remember, the Jets have his rights. If he's going to get paid in all likelihood, it, it could end up being by the Jets if they really, really want to play hardball. You also have to take into account that the NFL, the teams themselves, they don't like the trend that has been, you know, getting set. Jalen Ramsey, Antonio Brown, stuff like that. You force your way out and ultimately it ends up happening. Damian, you know this. I happen to know that owners and team executives have been complaining about that and feel that there needs to be something to change that level of momentum because they don't want to give the impression that, you know what, those who squeak get the most oil, that ultimately if you, you, you pout and you cry, you get upset enough that you're going to get your way. Not in the NFL. They're going to do what they can to hold on with whatever power they have, particularly at a time when we're seeing the power structure crumble before our very eyes. They're going to hold on to that for dear life. So I think that if I'm him, I tell his agent to calm down. I tell him to chill out. This is not the way to handle it. You want to be gone from the Jets. You don't want to be specifying what team you want to go to because they're gonna, the Jets are going to ask for the farm from them in order to get you. You're one of, if not the best safety in, the, in, in football. You know, you're getting about $3.5 million this year. It's about 30 guys that are paid more than you, it's a problem. So that means that what's a problem for you is at an extreme advantage for the New York Jets who still maintain your rights. Why would they give up getting, why would they give up on a guy who's one of the best, if not the best in the business at his position for such a cheap price just because you're saying, not only do I want to leave, but I want to go here. I think Jamal is right to want out. I, for, I for wholeheartedly support him. I hope he ends up pulling off, pulling it off because I'm no fan of the New York Jets with Adam Gase as their coach. I'm just not. Don't know much about Douglas, the GM, but Adam Gase, who I said it before and I'll say it again, looked, looked high at his opening press conference and as far as I'm concerned, has done nothing as a coach to prove to us that he wasn't because of his absence of productivity. I'm not sold on a guy. I don't think Jamal Adams is either. He wants out. He is justified. But can you pull it off? You're not going to pull it off by making demands when you don't have the leverage. You've got to be careful and you've got to be smart, not emotional in this particular situation. So I don't like it. Well, listen, there's a couple things. Number one, um, this is about the only thing that players can really do uh, to try to force their, force their hand is what Jamal Adams is doing. In the new CBA that, that the owners and the players agreed to, they've made it even harder for players to hold out uh, in a particular situation, especially the one that we're seeing with Jamal Adams uh, that could potentially happen. So Jamal Adams doesn't really have any leverage in this particular case. You're talking about a guy who has, realistically, as far as the Jets are concerned, they have Jamal Adams' rights for three years. This year, the fifth-year option, and if they decide to franchise tag him. Combined with the fact that with this whole pandemic, the salary cap next year could 
possibly stay flat or even decrease. So think about this. If you're a team, you got to give the Jets the proper compensation because Jamal Adams is not only one of the best defensive bats, but he's one of the best defensive players in the National Football League. The Jets are going to want a bounty for Jamal Adams. Then you have to pay Jamal Adams what he feels like he deserves to be paid. So in this type of environment, it is going to be extremely hard for a team to placate the New York Jets and give Jamal Adams the type of contract that he's going to want in this particular situation. Now, be, now me being a guy who follows the Jets pretty closely, I don't want to see Jamal Adams leave the Jets because, again, he's one of the best defensive players in the National Football League. I love the energy and everything that he brings to the Jets. But if it were me, I wouldn't be making these type of proclamations out in the public. That's why you have an agent. You let your agents do the work behind the scenes and hopefully try to make a move that way. Damien, I agree with you and Stephen A. in the sense that if he wants to get to the Dallas Cowboys specifically, this may not be the best way to go about it. But if he wants off the Jets yes. primarily, then this is smart. And to Damien's point, Stephen A., when you have a, a, a situation, this applies to life generally, if it's onerous in one direction, there's a kind of natural way that people behave that kind of evens, evens it out a little bit. So if the owners have in the CBA negotiated such, because they really operate a monopoly, the players don't have a lot of leverage, um, that, for example, as Damien says, you have your rookie deal, and then you can get franchised, and then franchised again, and you never really, through the prime of your career, get to your chosen destination or get the big money, um, then, then the way things tend to work is players will use what resources they have to protect themselves to make that happen. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.